Hi and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be explaining how you identify whether or not a molecule is polar and how you justify this in terms of the requirements for NCEA exam questions. In particular we are going to be looking at molecules that have up to four pairs of electrons around the central atom. There will be a separate video which considers molecules with up to six pairs of electrons around the central atom. But this is specifically relevant for level two in CEA. Okay, so when we consider the polarity of molecules, there are a couple of things we need to consider. We need to consider both the bond polarity, so are the bonds in the molecule polar, and if so, how polar, and you, which direction are they pointing in. So really you can think of um, a bond dipole, a polar bond, as a vector. This is particularly useful if you're studying physics and you're used to doing vector addition. It's a really good way to consider this. So to determine the polarity of a molecule, really you, what you're doing is summing up the bond dipole vectors. Now, if you don't do physics or you really don't like vectors, don't worry, I will explain this in a different way. But if you do, then that will probably get you there. Okay. So, to find out if the molecule is polar, there are three questions you need to ask yourself. First lot, are the bonds polar? Because if there aren't any polar bonds in the molecule, if all the bonds in the molecule are non-polar, then the molecule itself has to be non-polar. You cannot have a polar molecule that is consisting solely of non-polar bonds. Okay, the next thing you need to ask yourself is, is the shape symmetrical? Any asymmetrical shape with polar bonds will automatically be polar. And I'll explain a little bit more about this in just a moment. And finally, are all the bonds identical? So you could have a symmetrical shape, but if you've got different sizes of bond dipoles, then you're going to have a polar molecule. If everything is identical, then you'll end up with a non-polar molecule. So the way I like to picture polarity is like a tug of war. So if you can imagine a, a molecule, you've got your central atom, and you've got your bond dipoles pulling on that central atom. If all the bond dipoles are pulling evenly on that central atom, nothing is going to affect the polarity of that molecule. Okay, they, They'll all cancel out. So think of a tug of war where everyone's pulling equally in the same direction. That central atom isn't going to go anywhere. Okay, that's when we get a non-polar molecule. So all the poles, all the polar bonds, all the dipoles, they cancel out. If, however, you've got an uneven pull, so either the shape is not even, so that the poles are in different directions, or um, all the poles are of different strength, then that's going to have an overall impact on where that central atom sits, and that's the same as having an overall pole in your molecule, dipole in your molecule. Okay, so these are the things we really need to be thinking about and asking ourselves. Are the bonds polar? Is the shape symmetrical? Are the bond dipoles all the same? So an easy way to think of this, the way I like to think of it, is through a flowchart. I'm a big fan of flowcharts, as those of you who are in my classes will know. So this is the flowchart that I use to determine whether or not a molecule is polar. And actually, if you're thinking about level three in CEA, the same flowchart works. It's just got some different shapes. OK, so the first question you're asking yourself is, does the molecule contain polar bonds? If the answer to that is no, then obviously your molecule must be nonpolar. If the answer is yes, then the next question you're asking yourself is, what is the shape of this molecule? Is it symmetrical and symmetrical shapes? At level two, a linear, trigonal, planar, and tetrahedral. The asymmetric shapes are bent and trigonal pyramid. So if the shape is asymmetrical, then the molecule must be polar. If it's symmetrical, so it's linear or tetrahedral or trigonal, planar, then you go and you have to look at it and go, well, are all the bonds the same? Are they identical? So are the bond dipoles identical effectively? If they are, then they're going to cancel out and the molecule will be a non-polar. 
if they are different, then they will not be able to cancel out and the molecule will be polar. Okay, so polarity questions usually are worth excellence in NCEA if you do it properly. Because these questions are quite predictable and the answers are quite formulaic, you have to get every bit of it right to get that excellence. Okay, so the key things you need to say, and I'm going to tell you a couple of things that you absolutely cannot say as well. You need to talk about the polarity of the bonds and you need to state why they're polar or not in terms of the electronegativity difference between the atoms. It's not just the electronegativity, it is the difference in electronegativity between the atoms. You need to be able to state what the shape is and whether or not that's symmetrical. Like before, you've got to talk about are the bonds all the same or not. And then you need to be able to identify the polarity of the molecule correctly. And you need statements that include things like the bond dipoles do or don't cancel out and the bond dipoles are or are not symmetrically arranged around the central atom. Now the key thing you cannot say if you want excellence is that the bonds cancel. The bonds do not cancel. The bond dipoles cancel. Okay, that's the distribution of charge within the bonds. They can cancel out but the bonds themselves are still there. They don't cancel anything. Okay, that's something that markers look for. So don't say the bonds cancel. So the bond dipoles cancel. Okay, so let's have a look at an example question. This one's getting a little bit old now, but it's a nice straightforward example. Okay, so here is the diagram of ammonia in H3. So circle the word that describes the polarity of the molecule and justify your choice. Now, this is obviously a polar molecule. And if you have a look at that molecule right now, hopefully you can recognize what shape it is. If you can't, please go back and review the section on shapes before you start polarity, because you cannot explain polarity without being able to identify shape. OK, so here's how I would go about answering this question. First off, I'm going to circle polar because that's correct and that's going to give me an achieved point probably before I even do anything and then I'm going to get into some detail okay so the bonds between nitrogen and hydrogen are polar as there is a difference in electronegativity between the two atoms that phrase the difference in electronegativity is really important now the bit I've got in italics here nitrogen is more electronegative so we'll have a slightly negative charge while hydrogen will be slightly positive is not usually essential but it can be good to put in if you just want to impress the marker if you're not sure which one is most electronegative don't write anything okay it is better to stick with the bones of the answer than to put in something that is incorrect if you don't actually know what the correct answer is okay so the shape of the molecule is trigonal pyramid which is not symmetrical. That's one of those asymmetrical shapes we looked at. As the bond dipoles are not evenly distributed around the central atom, the bond dipoles do not cancel and the molecule is polar. Now, if this was something that was tetrahedral, you'd just take out the knots and away you go. So if this was a tetrahedral molecule, and it's not, but let's imagine it was methane, the shape of the molecule is tetrahedral, which is symmetrical. As the bond dipoles are evenly distributed around the central atom, the bond dipoles cancel out and the molecule is nonpolar. Virtually the same statement, just with a slight variation. One of the things that students get most confused about is the polar and nonpolar thing. And so they'll have a perfectly good answer, and at the end of it, they'll say, They'll get the polar and non-polar back to front. So just remember, polar means that there is a positive and a negative area within your molecule. Non-polar means that there's not. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Um, please do 
plenty of practice activities on these problems because this is a question that I can guarantee you comes up every year in the exams. So please know how to answer it and take yourself some nice easy marks. I hope to see you again soon. Have a good day.